back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. For those of you who are with us from the beginning, uh, I hope so you don't they enjoy all the matters we will bring for you. We had the top stories. We had Ezuku Chukudi. Come give us a better information on top of the newspaper. It's here. Um, where today, in comes smiling and in live smiling. Like I say, uh, the story it's a bit, it was a bit juicy. It wasn't as uh, difficult as it used to be. And uh, we get one special report from uh, Luchi, which she sent to us on top of uh, the situation of the things for outside. Yes, we are moving on to the next part. As all of Tato Camp, we get better guests where we would like to uh, get small conversation with based on uh, some very, very vital, important, as we go talk about. Why is that to cheat? No, I'm trying to make it clear. Vital and important. Is it important to you? Do you feel shaded? I don't blame you, Edewo. Do you feel that? You can't see the sun a bit. Edewo, I don't know what you are saying, <laughs> well, but I do know that... There are many people that need this conversation. Yes. Many people need this conversation. And I'm not excluding myself, by the nah. way. In case you are choosing to exclude yourself. I like I like the <laughs> fact that you had to take it in. Yeah, That's yeah, your business, good Nigeria. Nigeria. I'm not excluding myself. You're a good Nigeria. Now, a lot of us have been on lockdown. <laughs> yes. A lot of us have been working from home. Many people haven't been going to work. But one thing that is common is the weight gain. Mm. Why? Because a lot of people are not able to socially distance themselves from their fridge. And others, because of the season, we can't also take away the fact that there's an emotional aspect to eating. Lots more people are sort of compensating themselves with food because mm -hmm. they're sad, they don't understand what is happening, and all of a sudden they're diverting all their attention to food and films. Well, today, help us come in the person of Ade Damolalade Jobi, the founder of Ask Dams, and popularly known as Coach Dams. Hello, Coach Dams. Hi, good morning. Good morning. good morning. good to have you. It's great to have you. Welcome to the show. We are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah. Uh, this conversation is very, very needed. Uh, very, very important it's conversation. Needed. It's needed. And it's needed because a lot of us cannot socially distance ourselves from the fridge. Yes. For those that can, it's some sort of emotional trap. There's a lot of emotional aspects to eating. So let's first ask you, on a, you know, let's let's look at the ratio. How regularly do people complain to you about weight gain or, or trying to lose weight in this season? And this is because as much as there are people trying to lose weight, there are also people that are trying to gain weight in this season. Yes. So when you look at it, what's the ratio, what's the proportion of people that are trying to lose weight and people that are trying to gain weight from your experience? Because I'm sure they're always complaining to you. You know, in this season, even the people that you were, even the people that were trying to gain weight, they're hitting their goals at this point in time. While the people who are trying to lose weight, um, they're really seeking the help of a professional because truth of the matter is, um, there must be some form of accountability. And apart from accountability, we also have to deal with the emotional aspect of things. So it's a bit tricky. So on the average. I'm getting a minimum of a hundred of calls every hmm. day. Hmm. Like, please help. What plans do you have? Remember our pockets? Oh, we're in lockdown, social distancing, you know. So yeah. we, we've literally had to take need for different pockets, literally to suit every single criteria. Okay, because everybody wants to be healthy now. Everybody's thinking weight loss. Everybody's thinking immunity. So, yeah, we've had to create a bridge for that. Hmm. So as as uh, this is a, a major concern right now, seeing that okay we are locked down, uh, we have like all of the said earlier, there are people who have problems with their fridge, with their kitchen. It is a major struggle now. As as as, as a professional now, how would you give give us some few uh, tips that people can say okay. Well, Today, oh, this is what you need to do to be able to stay, you know, away from your fridge or stay away from your kitchen. Give us some few, you know, pointers on how you can plan your daily schedule that would help, you know, in your uh, weight loss process this time. Okay, so first of all, first things first, don't be too hard on yourself. One, mm -hmm. don't be too hard on yourself so you don't put a mental strain on yourself. Two, if you keep good food in your house, you will eat good food. Yeah? Right, right. That's point number two. Right. Three, try journaling. Because when you journal, you're able to find out or figure out a pattern that works for you. It's not everybody that wants to wake up first in the morning and then somebody will tell you, oh, eat breakfast like a king and not have one huge plate of food in front of you because a weight loss expert has told you, eat breakfast like a king. Mm -hmm. Knowing fully well that that can work. If it's, it's a trap for you for the entire day, so you must find what works for you and stick to it. Now, at this point in time, 
I advise every adult to incorporate some form of intermittent fasting into their plan. Unfortunately, because of time, I may not be going, to, I may not be able to go into what intermittent fasting is very deep. But the most common one that a lot of people know is eating within a certain time frame. Okay. And then after a certain time, they stop eating just to create some sort of control. Mm. So that their body knows when to expect food and the body knows when to expect um, when to stop expecting food. So that way you don't slow down your metabolism in the long run, but you're able to create a pattern and a schedule, a schedule that works for you in general. So definitely, intermittent fasting would also help with um, blood sugar regulation. It will help with hunger regulation, hormone regulation. So definitely, it's something to consider. There are six different types of intermittent fasting, by the way, that anybody can do. Yes. Then point number four, focus on eating healthy. So focus on the quality of your calories as opposed to the quantity, quantity, quantity all the time. Mm. Because when it comes to weight loss, and I'm happy as well as a weight loss expert, I mm. talk about calories a lot. Now, at this point in time, I'm not saying don't talk about calories because you must be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. Mm -hmm. That's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. However, you're going to put a mental strain. It's going to be harder for you if you are not also focusing on the quality of your food. Because mm. the quality of your food will help nourish your body, will help send signals to your brain that you are okay, yeah. you're getting your quality means and minerals, not just your, your macronutrients. Your macronutrients are your carbohydrates and your proteins. Your micronutrients are the ones you need in smaller quantities, so like your vitamin A, B, C, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. So you must focus on eating whole foods, focus on eating quality foods, focus on the quality of your calories also then you can focus on the quantity of your calories while you're doing this. Hmm. Now, okay. So those five points. Those like, five guys, major points. Yeah. Okay. And these points okay. are really very, very important points. Let's talk about people who are dealing with cravings and addictions in this season because mm -hmm. we find that binge eating is something that a lot of us do. People like that seek comfort because coronavirus is something we've never experienced. We've never been in a pandemic. We don't know what to do. Lots of people are sad. There are people who have lost their jobs. And right now, they are resorting to ice cream or just eating at odd hours. And, you know, just having unnecessary cravings. What would you advise in terms of dealing with cravings and bad, you know, terrible appetites, just overeating? <laughs> and the way you said terrible appetite just made me laugh. Because, um, you know, even as a weight loss expert, there are some days where, you know, things are going to spiral out of control. However, what can you do? First of all, for a lot of people who, who are battling um, emotional eating or are constantly eating, like the word, you use the word emotional in the beginning. They need to deal with a professional. A professional will tell you what works for you, how you can manage your appetite. You know, little things as much as not getting sleep. The less sleep you have, the more hungry you're going to be. The more stressed out you are, the more hungry you're going to be. And what a lot of people don't realize in this is that you find a lot of people saying, oh, I don't have time. You know, I'm feeling very lazy today. I can't do any form of activity. I used to be in that category also because I literally, I used to have a health, a very, very busy schedule from morning till evening. Mm -hmm. I still do. But what, I, what I've realized is that to stay sane in this season and to also manage my appetite, my body needs to release happy hormones. You know, I've been talking about happy hormones like since coronavirus lockdown started. You know, you're, so in order to release happy hormones, you need to engage in some form of activity. Mm. So now we're not even just thinking in form of, oh, we're just burning calories. No. You're thinking of activity in the form of, if I release more happy hormones, my appetite will also be regulated. My appetite will also be under control. Now, this is not the time, even though I said we'll do some sort of activity, it's not the time to start doing you know, strenuous activities that you know that you have never engaged in before. You know, so there are even there's so many workout guides and so much, so so many workout videos that one can can listen to or can watch rather, and then you, you can repeat the the activities that they're doing. Whatever you do, if you have never done any form of activity before, start with walking. I'm still walking, and there's nothing wrong with still walking. You know, start with walking. Number one, you can also start with doing some sort of weight. So if you have weight, fine. If you don't have weight. You know that your bottled water, if you have sand around you, go fill your bottled water, your bottles rather, with sand or stone so that you can lift something while you're walking because resistance training will help you build muscle. And the more muscle you have, 
the more your um your your metabolism will be increased. You're literally a fat burning machine, even in your sleep. So don't just focus on cardio at this point in time. You also need to focus on resistance training. They both go hand in hand. And in doing this, your body will be able to make more happy hormones, endorphins. You need it in this day state. So get active, get enough sleep, make sure that you're doing anything to distress and unwind, even if it means unplugging from social media. I literally intentionally have to do that two to three hours, even during my working hours. And my schedule is even more busier. My busy, my, sorry, my schedule is, is even busier than it was before COVID. But I literally have to unplug for about two hours, two to three hours a day, totally from TV, social media, just to do some meditation and just be it, so just be quiet and to get my body to just relax and sleep. So these things are very important. Um, you may also want to consider something called adaptogens. Now, adaptogens is not just one thing, or they're not just one thing. Adaptogens are a whole category of food that can help you manage your appetite, help with immunity, help with wellness. So, for example, the other day I was talking about mushrooms, Ganoderma mushrooms. I was talking about um, Indian ginseng, which will help to lower your stress levels. Indian ginseng would also help to lower your cortisol levels. In lowering your cortisol levels, your stress level will be decreased and you're able to sleep better. So, people who have included Indian ginseng in their diets is very popular by coming that sound. That's what did you so call it again? Indian ginseng. Indian ginseng. Um, and Help to lower your stress levels and it helps with sleep and insom insomnia generally. And it also helps to manage your blood sugar, which in turn would help to manage your appetite. Your raw green coffee beans very good for you. Please, I didn't say slimming coffee. Uh -huh. I said raw green, like the way God intended it to be. You can you can actually buy it and boil it, and it will help to manage your appetite and your blood sugar level in the long run. Really, in turn, help with your appetite. Ginger is also an adaptogen. Okay. So there's so many adaptogens. I think I was talking about adaptogens, so let me not take too much of your time. Mm, but mm. we need to deal with the root cause of the problem, with the root cause of the emotional eating. When you're able to deal with it, for some people, it's scared. So it may have to start with, look, the world is not going to end. hundred years ago, there were happy. You may need to actually bring out history back for them to reassure them that, no, you are going to be okay. For me, my faith is be grounded. Mm. You know, so whenever I get fearful or oh, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen next. They still have found a cure. Oh my God, does the name of Jesus, does the God of Jesus not work again? Father, what's happening? <laughs> I bring up my Bible and I think you have to meditate on the scripture. So meditation goes a long way. So if you because of your emotional eating, you no know, meditation would help. So it's a different strokes for different folks. That say. It's never a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, so now I I I, I see that uh, you spoke a lot about uh, getting enough sleep. Now some people say that they sleep and they add weight. That sometimes they don't even have to eat. That the amount of sleep they they, they get would uh, you know uh, which would show in their in their weight gain. So do you think this is is this a possibility or is there a way they can walk around this if this is the case? <laughs> First of all. It is a big myth or a big lie that uh, sleep would um, make you gain weight randomly. It's mm. not possible. Okay. It will, cannot make you automatically gain weight. So let's remove that out of the equation. Yeah. For you to gain weight, you must be a calorie surplus. It's mm. a must. It's, it's a must of science. The metabolism of, the function of, of calories in the calories out. You must be in a calorie surplus to gain weight. For you to maintain your weight, maintain some sort of calorie equilibrium. Mm. That means there must be a balance. A balance you're, using, yes. you're eating the amount of energy that your body is using on the average. Yep. And then for you to be, you know, for you to lose weight, there must be a calorie deficit. So mm. sleep alone, can never, it will never be the solo reason for weight gain. It is not possible. It is impossible. Mm. However, having said that, if you are living a sedentary lifestyle, you're not active, but all you do is eat and sleep eat all and day. Sleep. Yeah. And it's not going to gain weight at the end of the day. Hmm. And this is because all you're doing is literally eating and sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sleep alone will not make you gain weight. You must okay. be in a calorie surplus. All right. There's All right. a proverb that, you know, I, I think it's a Chinese proverb, I'm not quite sure, that says that you dig your grave with your teeth. And that, <laughs> you know, just shows how important it is that what you put in your mouth is very good for your body. 
In terms of losing weight, there have been several speculations here and there, from people overdosing on apple cider vinegar to lemon water, cucumber water. And you just mentioned now that, you know, saying that sleep makes you gain weight is a myth. So I'd like us to burst some myths as regards weight loss. What are the, some of the things that people are doing wrong mm -hmm. as regards weight loss? So let's, let's just start to burst some of these myths so that they know that, you know, if I'm not doing this anymore, we're not doing mm -hmm. that anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so here's the thing. A lot of people, everybody wants some sort of miracle, some sort of magic. If it was possible, if there was a pill that would, some people would swallow that would make them lose 20 kg overnight, they would do it. <laughs> so it's a very, it's a very the, weight loss, the weight loss industry is a very huge industry. It's very easy to scam. You're not careful. And that's why mm. you're going to get a tiny popping of, oh, lose weight with this, lose weight with that tea. It's a, a, a type of tea, a certain type of tea can never be the singular reason for you, for, 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 for your weight loss, rather. So let me clarify this issue. Lemon water may increase your metabolism, yeah? But of what use a faster metabolism, or of what use is jump-starting your metabolism if what you're going to eat the rest oh. of the 24 hours is mm. So it's still down to a healthy and nutritious diet, personalized plan for you as an individual. Apple cider vinegar is just purely fermented apples, from apples. Now, ap apple cider vinegar is amazing. It's what I use on my face as a cleanser. You can see, I don't have any, well, I don't know if you can see. Your face is very quiet. But I don't have any we can see. on my face. But I dilute apple cider vinegar half and half with water, and I use it as a cleanser on my face, you know, Apart from that, it's good to drink it. If you can drink it, please disclaimer, do not drink it without a straw. If, you're, if you drink apple cider vinegar randomly, try to drink it with a straw. Excellent. Apple cider vinegar is really good for your metabolism. It's great for women who have like yeast infection. It's good for people who suffer from diabetes to help stabilize their blood sugar. But if you're thinking that you're going to drink apple cider vinegar and all of a sudden you're going to have six pack. It is not going to happen. <laughs> if you think you're going to drink lemon water and then you will proceed back, it will not happen. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're automatically going to drink tea and wake up the next morning or the week after and you're going to have lost temp, um, it will not happen. All these herbal tea watching. people are, they are the ones that are now ready. Herbal tea. Herbal tea and waist trainers. Yeah. Please, I think that should be my last, my last question. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, people are still um, vulnerable. Now, here's the thing. When I, because I'm very inquisitive. So when I walk before pre-COVID, when whenever I walk into a store or I see a particular type of tea or whatever it is, and even before I started to lose weight, let me so I like let me, let me say something. It, it, um, when you want to lose weight, when you're just lose weight, you do anything and everything. I've been in that situation where I was a pretty desperate weight. You know, even in my uni years, that once, once, once I see something and the thing is labeled fat burner. I don't even, I won't even care to read what's that back. In my mind, it's just like, okay, this last one did not work. This one this can one work. Would work. yeah. I did it in that, look, this thing is a, is a long-term thing. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Mm. You know, so some of the ingredients in, this, in these things are basic things like your green tea, mm -hmm. maybe some have oolong tea, some have moringa, of which these marketers know that these things will increase your metabolism. Mm -hmm. But deep down inside, what they're not telling you is that Drinking the tea is going to increase your metabolism. You are not losing weight from doing this alone. Mm. So they'll tell you, you don't have to die. Just, you don't have to watch what it's Just do anything and lose weight. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work that way. Except you're dealing with a surgeon who is going to become surgery overnight. Mm -hmm. You must watch what function of the quality of your calories, the quantity of your calories. What, what you put in is what you get out, what you see at the end of the day. Mm. Now, this is, this is very, very uh, enlightening, I should say. But uh, looking at the situation of uh, the country now, and uh, a lot of people would say they might not have access to most of these things you, you, have, um, you have advised. You know, they might not have access to them because maybe they can't get them to buy and stuff like that. So as you're at home, is there like uh, the the quick fix homemade remedy that you can you know say okay every day or every morning you should take this to help you or you know is there something that we can do in the house as all of us day house now that we don't, we don't need to you know go out there to look extra for the ingredients or something that we can just 
whip up together every day that we can use in the uh, weight loss process to help us. And in addition to what Adewo has just said, and I think that's a very important question because some of us just think that before, for you to lose weight, you have to only eat fruits and vegetables, mm. broccoli, <laughs> kale, and all these other things. I don't have broccoli. I don't have kale, but well, I want to lose want weight. To lose what weight. should I do? Uh -huh. You have Google, you have okra, you have bitter leaf, uh -huh. you have efo, you have chabi. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, now which you have, you talk? Uh, tomatoes, you mm -hmm. have pepper. Mm -hmm. Even Nigerian, Nigerian food is actually one of the healthiest foods in this entire world. Mm. But unfortunately, the way we, cook, we feel like we need to cook it with a drum load of oil. That's the issue. That's the main issue. But our food is actually not unhealthy in any shape or form. Even mm. our skills are not unhealthy. Think about it. The, the three major ingredients in, a, in an average pot of Nigerian stew that we eat with rice, whether white rice or brown rice or, or fada rice, mm -hmm. which are all food. Yeah. The, the three major ingredients are onions, tomatoes, and pepper. And pepper. Now these things are very, they have like your the, the micronutrients that you need, the vitamin A, some of the vitamin B, some vitamin C, some of the things that you need. So let's not overthink it. And it's always a different strokes or different folks that there. I have some people who are coppers that are functioning very, very well on my plan currently. So you don't have to eat broccoli or kill weight. If, if it's regular stew that you have, regular airport, regular away to, aka you go to some stores and you see jute leaf. Mm. Jute leaf is a way. You go to some stores, you will see lady fingers. Mm -hmm. Lady fingers is all. You get what I mean? So okay. these things are fancy. If you don't know what you're doing, then you eat the apple. <laughs> So let me bring you guys okra. Yeah, you see. Yes. <laughs> People don't know. Oh, wow. Wow. When somebody tells you eat star apples, you're going to think, oh my God, star apples. Where do I get star apples from? I don't know what star apples are. Meanwhile, it's ordinary agbalumo. Agbalumo. Hey. Agbalumo is star. You see? So just make sure that you're eating. In Nigeria, we are blessed. Sweet mm. potatoes are very cheap. Mm. Everybody. I'm not, not everybody actually, but the average Nigerian can afford sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes the yeah. average Nigerian can afford other rice. If you want to eat white rice, no problem. Make, just make sure that you're eating it with some form of vegetables. The difference between your white rice and your brown rice is not even really the calorie content. Because they pretty much have the same calorie. The difference is that one has more fiber than the other. Mm -hmm. If you want to eat white rice, eating a lot of vegetables on the side to make up for the lack of fiber. Potatoes are great. Also, whether sweet potatoes or Irish potatoes, Irish potatoes are even really good for you at this point in time. Irish potatoes have more magnesium than sweet potatoes, and magnesium will help you sleep better. Mm. Magnesium will help with stress levels. So there's nothing like a bad food as long as it grows from the ground, mm. you know. And mm. back to saying, oh, can we do every morning? What you can do every morning is have a nice cup of tea, you know. We're blessed in Nigeria. We have the Bavaro leaf. Hmm. The leaves are also they also used as some sort of anti-malaria. Let's yeah. start with some trouble. Let's go back to nature. Properly see. Let's start with these things. You get. I'm not even talking about weight for weight loss right now. I'm talking about immunity. Immunity, yes. Your immunity. Your hmm. Let's go back. Let's go back to nature. Let's go back to what we have. Lemon grass. Lemon grass is in fact it grows by the roadside. If you mm -hmm. don't come pick random. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic for your immunity. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to our Ijile, Ijile food. Onje Ijile, So let's go back to our roots. Let's go back to what we were doing from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you'll find out that these are our, our spices. Ginger is really accessible. Yes. You know, Zoko cheap. If you cannot find them, Indian ginseng, for example, it sounds very fancy for you. Then Zobo. Zobo is Zobo help stress relief. Yeah. Zobo help um mm. go to sleep. Some people have even told me that Zobo has an intoxicating effect on them. Ha. The same effect as alcohol. Wow. wow. That doesn't do that for me. Wow. That's but let me put a disclaimer there. If you have blood pressure issues, then stay away from Zobo. It's never a one size fits all approach. Mm. Sorry, did you say that if I'm you have high blood pressure issues, one should stay away from Zobo? No. So if you have high blood pressure, Feel free to drink Zobo. Drink away. Hmm. Drink away. If you're a normal person, if you have blood pressure issues, feel free to drink Zobo. But if you have low blood pressure issues, okay. be careful with Zobo because 
Football will make your blood pressure to drop. And you don't want your blood pressure to drop. You're already battling low blood pressure. Okay. okay. So that makes Okay. That makes a, lot, makes of a sense. lot of sense. In fact, this is this has been a very interesting <laughs> conversation. I'd really, really, really like to go on, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you for all the healthy tips that you've shared with us. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's one thing that I've taken away with there. If you remember nothing from this conversation, our food, nothing is bad so long as it comes, comes, from, comes the from the ground. You know, yeah. let's let's look for ways to go back to what we used to do before. Our agbos, our udakus, mm -hmm. our traditional foods. They're always very important. Thank and I like, I like that you said I can eat my rice. You know, eat my rice because they're telling us rice is the devil. Is bread the devil too? How about bread? Is bread the devil? If you don't have blood sugar regulation issues, feel free to eat your rice. Feel free to make a sandwich with your white bread. So it's never a one size fits all approach. So you must find what works for works you. But for you. generally speaking, enjoy your rice, enjoy your bread. Put some vegetables in your bread. Think health, think wellness, think healthy, as opposed to just this stuff. And it will your Aha! Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you so you much. much. That's not a boring way to look at these things. Thank you so <laughs> much for, for sharing this and for joining us on the show. We've been speaking with Coach Dams herself, Adedamo Laladejobi, the founder of Ask Dams, and she shared with us all these healthy tips. And I'm, I know that you still share more as well. So um, I look forward to being able to follow up with you more online to get more information. Thank you so much for all that. Yeah. Um, it's been a very interesting session for me. And I'm sure that even Adewo has learned I've a few learned. things. Even though he's not looking to lose with. Nah. Yeah. Nah. There's nothing to lose here. Or else you want me to lose my mind. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look at a package. We had started a show telling you today that uh, Tara Feladroti and her husband celebrated 19 years of marriage yesterday, and it was also his birthday two days ago. So happy belated birthday to Mr. Feladrotoye. Um, we all know of him and his impact and how very passionate he is about leadership and transferring values. Today we're going to be playing an interview that we had with his wife, um, Tara Durotoye, a while ago, and she talked about her entrepreneurial journey, the challenges she experienced, the impact, you know, the, the, the influence of her partner and her children, her support system. Basically, it does take a village to be able to raise a family or to be able to achieve your dreams. Enjoy this interview. Get your pen and your notepads because there's lots of, you know, wisdom. There's lots of lessons to learn in this interview. When we come back, we still have a lot for you in store on The Good World.